Okay, so what I wanted to do was give you a little sample lesson and give you an experience, an inside look into what an AP course with me looks like. And so this is actually a great intro lesson for all three of the AP courses that I teach, the AP Art History, the AP 2D Design Portfolio, and the AP Drawing. And so this is going to be, for some of you, this might be a review. For some of you, this might be kind of newer information. But going over the basics of understanding the elements and principles of art. And the reason that I'm saying this is applicable to all three portfolios is because um, artists are always using the elements and principles to create art. So if you're working on creating your own art, it's really, really helpful to understand them. And on the flip side, so if you're looking at our art history, it makes it easier to analyze works of art and to better understand why some pieces are more successful than others. All right. So Michelangelo said, a man paints with his brains and not with his hands. And so what he's talking about there, which is what I'm going to be going over with you today, is while an artist is, you know, obviously using their hands to actually make the work, there is a lot of thought and knowledge that goes into creating a piece and having a really, really solid understanding of the elements and principles and how they work together is what really makes a great artist great. Or I should say it's one of the elements that makes a great artist great. Now today, I don't want you to be concerned if you don't feel like you're an expert on the elements and principles by the end of this lesson. As I said, this is a, this is a sample and this is just to kind of get you started and help to dip your toes into the waters of elements and principles. So if this is rather new to you, I don't want you to feel concerned if um, you don't feel like an absolute expert by the end of this lesson. So an overview of what the elements and principles are. So the elements over here are line, color, value, shape and form, space and texture. And I will say, which we're not going to get into a lot today, but we'll talk about further in the course, is that each one of these elements have special things to understand about them. For example, line. There are many different types of lines and there are ways that artists actually use line to create emotions. Um, color. There is the whole study of color and color theory and really understanding what colors mean, how colors interact with each other, and all of those things. So we're not going to get into that today because that would make this a really long <laughs> lesson. Over here you're seeing the principles of art, which are unity, variety, balance, emphasis, contrast, rhythm and repetition, proportion and scale, and figure ground relationships. So kind of how elements and principles work together is the elements are the things that work together to actually create a principle. So an artist might use line in order to create repetition. Um, an artist might use color in order to create contrast, or they might use color to create emphasis. So we're going to look at some examples today so that you can see how they're really working together. But the elements and principles are not separate things. They are always present, kind of like a team playing together to get the end goal of a really successful and interesting composition. So this is an example of the David sculpture and I kind of gave you two different views of it just because this one with the people in really helps you to actually understand the size of the piece. So a couple different things that you're seeing take place in this. So one, we're seeing Michelangelo really manipulating the idea of scale. And scale has to do with the size of something in comparison to something else. And so that's why I wanted you to see the sculpture up against people because we know we have a general idea, a general understanding of the average size of an adult person. And so seeing the sculpture up against these people, you're really understanding the grand scale of this sculpture. The next thing is balance 
And so the idea of how Michelangelo kind of really has this bent leg and you can tell that there's more weight put on this leg. However, at the same time, the sculpture doesn't feel like it's going to topple over. It doesn't feel way, way heavier on one side than the other. Part of that is because of this piece up behind the back of da David's leg. So this is the side of the body that has more weight on it, but we really feel like it's supported and so it's not feeling like it's going to fall over. The other thing that's helping with the weight of this sculpture, even though this leg is kind of pushing the weight over to this side, we have the gaze of the sculpture taking us back to this side as well as this arm lifted up. So all of those are intentional decisions that are being made by Michelangelo to help to balance the work of art. So kind of a back and forth play, where if instead this leg remained how it was and the head looked over here, the, the piece would feel really unbalanced. It would feel like it was going to topple over and our eye wouldn't move through the whole sculpture nearly as well. The next one is unity. So really looking like everything's brought together. So one, there's unity in the color. So overall, the whole sculpture is pretty much the same color. And that is one way of unifying the whole piece and making it all look like it goes together. The other thing is the sculpture overall is a very similar texture. So it, it has the smooth texture of what we would think skin is like and we really only have a different texture popping up here in the hair. So that element of texture is helping to bring unity into the piece. The element of value and color is helping to bring unity to the sculpture. And then form. So you will you saw when we were looking back at the elements of art that space and form were right up against each other or shape and form, I'm sorry, not space. So shape is whenever we're talking about two-dimensional objects and form is when we're talking about three-dimensional objects. So this is a sculpture, it's a three-dimensional sculpture and overall looking at all of the forms that are working together and those forms are also creating unity. So part of the reason those forms are creating unity is they appear to be in proportion to each other so they're making sense up against the next one um, as opposed to you know if he had like a giant foot that was coming way out or one hand that was really great um, really really large then that would really be a manipulation of form all right so we're gonna look at another piece and what I want you to do is hit pause once I'm done talking, I'll tell you when hit pause. So you're going to look at this piece by Charles DeMuth, and I want you to jot down some ideas. So just the easiest way to start is by writing down what elements of art you're seeing, and then I want you to think about what principles of art you're seeing and think about how those two are connected. So I want you to hit pause and... Um, there's a worksheet below this that you should, if you haven't already downloaded, you're going to want to do that because it has the elements and principles listed for you because I don't expect you to have them memorized already. So you could also just circle what elements do you see present in this piece? What principles of art do you see happening? And then drawing some connector lines as to what elements you think are connected to what principle. So now's the time to hit pause see what you think you can figure out. Once you've done that, that hit play again and we will discuss this piece together. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too hard and if it was, that's okay. This takes a little bit of practice to get used to. So one thing that we're seeing is leading lines, also the use of line, but when it's used in this way, it's called leading lines. So these lines that are jutting all across the composition are really helping to lead our eye 
to lead our eye to move throughout the composition. It's creating almost a Z, which is a really great composition format. So leading lines or line is one of the elements that we're seeing in this piece. Another one is color, and more specifically, complementary color. So at the beginning, I told you there's a whole lot of color theory. Uh, so one of the color theories is called complementary colors. And complementary colors are found opposite each other on the color wheel. Um, they also tend to really vibrate against each other creating contrast and making one pop against the other. And red and green, which we're seeing here, are complementary colors. So we have this red of the building and then this green in the window, which is not something we would really expect to see in the window, but it's helping to create the contrast up against the red building and then a few other green spots throughout the piece. Another one that we're seeing is repetition. So we're seeing repetition of shape so the element is shape, and then shape is creating the principle of repetition. So we have the repetition of all of these squares and rectangles happening all over, which helps to kind of keep moving our eye throughout the piece. It's also a way that the piece is being unified. So from having that shape repeated over and over and over, it is creating unity. You could also talk about how the repetition of that shape is creating variety. So instead of having the exact size square over and over, we have some squares, some rectangles, some different, lots of different size rectangles. So there's still a lot of variety in the one shape that we're seeing repeated over and over and over again. So you're seeing shape creating repetition, you're seeing shape creating unity, and you're seeing shape creating variety. Um, unity through repetition, which I just said. Um, another one is balance, and it's by breaking the composition into thirds. So we really like seeing things broken down into thirds. So visually, we like things in like threes and fives and sevens. And that's happening in several ways here. So these lines that are coming across are breaking this into one, two, three. Then we also have this pole coming down, which is helping to kind of break this piece up. We have this. So one, two, three, um, and is we don't like things visually that are perfect, perfectly symmetrical. That tends not to be incredibly interesting. So part of the artist's job is to make the piece feel balanced when it's not actually balanced. And again, that can be kind of a rough concept to wrap your brain around. Um, so if you're not quite there today, that's okay. That's something we'll work on a lot more inside of the course. So what I wanted to show you was how elements of art and the principles of art can be used in something as basic as doodling. Um, so this is a doodle that I just pulled out of my sketchbook. I kind of, I love just sitting around and doodling. Um, and so you're also going to be trying this yourself. So I chose one element, and I chose the element of line. So first I want to point out just where you're seeing that. So these are all straight lines coming down. I have this little curved line coming through, then these lines going through here. But the whole thing is made up of line. And then the principles that you're seeing are repetition, variety, and contrast. So repetition that you're seeing the line over and over and over again. Variety, because I'm changing the size of the line. So the line is lots of different lengths and the line is going in different directions. And then last, you're seeing contrast of the really white, blank, empty page up against what almost looks like a shaded area where all of the lines actually are. So what I want you to do, and again, this is just to have fun and kind of start to play around with the concept, is you're going to pause this. You're going to choose one element of art. So just like I chose line, you're going to choose one element of art. Um, easier ones to focus on would be like line, shape, form, or texture, um, any of those. I mean, you could use color too if you wanted to. Choose one element of art. Um, and then you're going to select 
at least two principles of art. If you want to select more, go for it. And just take like 10, 15 minutes and do some doodling. And what you're going to do is really focus on, in your doodle, you're focusing on using that one element of art and you're focusing on using those two principles of art. And I just want you to see what actually happens. So how does it change your thought process? How does it change the end result of your doodle? So when you're done with doodling, you can go ahead and hit play and come back and listen to the very end of this video. Okay, so I hope that you had fun doodling. Um, depending on how much you do it naturally, you may have found that more comfortable or maybe a little bit stressful. Hopefully not too stressful. So the last thing that I want you to reflect on today is how did having a basic understanding and conscious decision making about the elements and principles of art actually impact your doodling? Um, and the more and more that you understand the elements and principles, the more and more you have the ability to solve problems. So the more you can look at a work of art that you're working on and start to break it down and figure out what's actually missing, what it needs to make it pop, to grab people's attention, to make it look finished. And it can also help you when you're looking at other people's art. Uh, it can give you something to actually talk about their art. It can help you better understand the expertise that happened, the thought process that went into creating that work of art. And it can help you better evaluate why works of art are working and why works of art aren't working. So this would be kind of a, this is an overview of how some of the lessons are delivered throughout the course of looking at examples, having some actionable things that you're going to do and hearing me speak.